On a sunny afternoon in July, Hanabi Yasuraoka reminisces about a fine day she spent with a man whom she thought was her soulmate. With a blush, she mulls over how there's nobody better than him. But her reverie is suddenly broken by the very object of her daydreams, her affections. Her homeroom teacher, Narumi Kanai, enters the empty classroom. Still flustered, she blurts out Big Brother, but he corrects her, saying that she should call him Sensei when they're at school. Despite his words, he still calls her Hanachan, out of habit, so she quickly retorts that he shouldn't call her by her nickname. Narumi corrects himself and calls her Miss Yasuraoka, but the air of familiarity continues to hang over them. He isn't used to being so formal around the girl he's known ever since she was little. A smile makes its way to Hanabi's face, but it disappears as quickly as it came when a woman's voice calls out, Kanai Sensei? Startled by the sweet voice calling him, Narumi quickly turns around to face the woman by the door. While he's flustered by her presence, the music teacher, Akane Minagawa, greets Hanabi with a soft smile. The girl, however, has a sullen look in her eyes as she greets her back. Nanami rushes towards Akane, leaving Hanabi to stare at the two teachers intently. She sees how Nanami blushes even harder when Akane inches closer to him, and having had enough of their display, she walks out of their classroom. With Hanabi's head down, she ends up bumping into a boy. She looks up at him and whispers that she didn't see him. The two students just stand in the hallway, while listening to the teacher's subtle flirting in the room. I thought you'd cry. Mugi Awaya quietly tells her, but Hanabi just looks at him and blurts out the word, Stupid. Mugi pulls her by the hand, and all the while, her thoughts keep drifting to a bitter place. Hopeless love, painful love, unrequited love. Hanabi wonders if they're really beautiful. Mugi brings her to the back of their schoolyard, and under the bright sun, he caresses her hair and holds her hand while closing the gap between them. I don't think they are. She inwardly decides as she and Mugi share a passionate kiss. The two are dating, so them kissing is no big deal. Everyone is in awe of how beautiful and popular they both are, making them look like the perfect couple. But underneath that veneer of youthful perfection lies a rotten little secret. Mugi and Hanabi are just each other's replacements. They hold each other close as they long for different people. Nanami's face flashes in Hanabi's mind, while Mugi imagines Akane's smile. Three months ago in April, it was Hanabi's first day as a high school junior when a familiar voice greeted their class. To her surprise, it was Narumi, her childhood friend, her first love. Though she knew that he'll be working in her school, she never imagined he would be her homeroom teacher. She felt so happy, knowing that she'd get to see him every day. One day, Hanabi was excitedly running to the faculty room to bring some papers to Narumi. She even mistakenly blurted out Big Brother before changing it to Sensei. As she slid the door to open, Hanabi held her breath when she saw Narumi and Akane standing close to each other. Hanabi stood by the door, watching as Narumi blushed in the teacher's company. Akane quickly noticed her and called Narumi's attention. Hanabi's smile dropped as Narumi thanked her for bringing him the handouts. Hanabi had known and watched Narumi for a long time so she knew the look on his face, one he'd never had before. Upon realizing this, Hanabi felt stupid for letting her guard down. She sat in Narumi's class, incredibly annoyed by how the stupid little middle-aged chick could be getting in her way. That night, Hanabi sat beside Narumi in her home while eating the ramen that her mom made. Narumi mentioned he couldn't believe how much Hanabi had mellowed out. He enjoyed the food and told her how good of a cook her mom was. The woman overheard him and thanked Narumi. She also mentioned that Hanabi helped, which she rarely did. Hanabi yelled from embarrassment, while Narumi awkwardly laughed and thanked her mom again. She smiled and said he was their neighbor after all. While walking home that same night, Narumi mentioned how he enjoys homemade cooking since he only lives with his father and neither of them can cook. Hanabi glanced at him as she remembered something that Narumi would always say since he was in junior high. I can't wait to have a wonderful wife. Hanabi realized he hadn't said it that much lately and thought it might be because Narumi already had someone specific in mind. Hanabi thinks back to the field day events in school, where she and Narumi won first place in the three-legged race. But her little celebration was interrupted by a kid asking her why she wasn't running with her mom or dad. The children accused her of cheating, asserting that Narumi's too young to be her father. 
when they diverted their attention to teasing Narumi and upset Hanabi runs away. Narumi followed her to the back of the building and found her crouching in the corner. He called out to her, but she just said she didn't care what the other kids were saying because running with him wasn't unfair. In turn, he commented that it also isn't unfair to eat the packed lunch her mom prepared. He knew her mother stayed up late to prepare it for them, so they should eat up and finish it all. Nanami looked so grateful for the lunch, while Hanabi's just unamused. They then compared their situations. Hanabi not having a father, and Nanami not having a mother. They both realized that they have something that the other is jealous of. He then told her that they'll be able to help each other whenever they felt lonely. Hanabi is taken back to the present when Narumi waves her goodbye. She watches him walk away and whispers to herself, Liar. Hanabi met Akane when she bumped into her after overhearing some students gushing over how hot the new music teacher is. Hanabi stared at her, noticing every little detail with an irritated look on her face. Long hair, lean beige cardigan, strong smell of shampoo, natural style makeup. Suddenly, Mugi started picking up the music sheets that fell and hands them to Akane. She thanked him, calling him by his nickname so Mugi reminded her that they're in school, so she quickly apologized. That was the first time Hanabi met Mugi. She stared at him, wondering if he's another one of her fanboys. But the longer she looked at him, the more she recognized the look on his eyes. Hanabi asked him if he knows who she likes. Mugi answered that he does. The two stood together on a balcony watching their teachers walk together under the cherry blossom trees. What a coincidence it was that the two people they like seemed to be interested in each other. Mugi told Hanabi about his relationship with Akane, about how she was his tutor in junior high, and that he never thought that she would be a teacher at his high school. He noticed Hanabi wasn't listening and called her out, but she just sighed under her breath and asked herself, What's so good about her, big brother? Mugi told her not to diss Akane, to which she replied that she gets it, how guys like those sweet girls. The day ended with their first out of many moments they never thought they'd spend with each other. Hanabi and Mugi start spending more time together. On a rainy day in June, they were hanging out in Mugi's bedroom, when the two started to mess around. Before kissing Hanabi on the neck, Mugi tells her to pretend he's Narumi. Hanabi felt awkward at first, but she realizes that Mugi doesn't have any feelings for her. She's just a replacement for him. She relaxes under him as Mugi tells her to close her eyes. She starts imagining Narumi while Mugi kisses her forehead, and then her lips. It was electric. That was my first kiss, Hanabi whispers. Mugi is surprised by this, but Hanabi tells him it felt good to do it again. Mugi leans in, giving her what she wants. As he undresses her, Hanabi wonders if he's a good replacement. She convinces herself it's okay, while imagining the hands unbuttoning her uniform are Narumi's. The things that Narumi doesn't do, the things that he won't do, and the things that she wants him to do. Hanabi tries to imagine Mugi's every touch as Narumi's. She craves for him, but knows she can't have what she wants. As Mugi continues touching her, she tells herself to concentrate and not make a sound. She's trying to imagine Narumi, so she doesn't want to remind Mugi that it's also not her. She's not Akane. She's just a replacement. It's better that he doesn't see her face and hear her voice. In the middle of their intimate moment, Hanabi receives a text message from Narumi, thanking her for dinner the other day. She stares at her phone with a sad look on her face when Mugi asks her if she wants to stop. Without looking, he tells her he thinks that that's enough for today. Still, he asks if she wants to keep doing things like this with him or if she wants to stop. Back to the present in July, Hanabi stands behind the school with the boy who's waiting for her answer. She apologizes and says goodbye, but the boy grabs her hand and tells her he was expecting a positive answer. Hanabi just tells him, There's nothing more revolting than the affection of someone you're not interested in, is there? As she walks away, she sways and gets a flashback of herself with Narumi. Hypocrite, she thinks to herself. Grabbing onto the rooftop fence, she thinks back to how she can't answer Mugi's question. With the wind blowing her hair, she looks to her side and sees Mugi standing by the doorway. That's when Hanabi knows she doesn't want to stop, because she can't let go of the Narumi she sees through Mugi. Mugi is surprised to find Hanabi in his house after school. With an empty look in his eyes, Mugi grabs her face and asks her if she wants to say that they're dating. He seems content with this arrangement, 
and he even talks about how they'll be able to depend on each other if they need to. Suspicious, Hanabi asks if he's sure he won't fall in love with her. Mugi assures her that she isn't his type. She agrees, saying that he isn't her type either. With that, the two of them made a pact that neither of them would fall in love with each other. If one of them were to make it with the person that they were in love with, their relationship would end. They made a pinky promise of giving each other everything except their feelings. As days go by, Hanabi and Mugi spend more time with each other. They often hang out on the school rooftop, just talking and resting there. But one day, Hanabi asks him if they're friends with benefits. He's quick to deny this, telling her that they didn't really do it and that they probably won't. Then Mugi asks, If one of us is feeling lonely, what's wrong with wanting another to hold you? They look up at the sky and sit in silence, as Mugi says they'll make it come true. The scum's wish. While Hanabi's waiting for Mugi outside his classroom, her close friend, Sanae Ebato, approaches her. She asks if they can walk home together, but before she can answer, Mugi's by the door thanking her for waiting for him. The atmosphere is awkward, but Sanae quickly tells Hanabi not to worry, as she knows Mugi is her boyfriend and he comes first. Hanabi just smiles and thanks her. As the two walk away, Sanai watches them while Mugi's classmate whispers about how they're such a perfect couple. Hanabi and Mugi walk side by side in the hot weather. Mugi asks her if she's sure that she doesn't want to walk home with her friend, but Hanabi just asks for a sip from his bottled water instead of answering him. Mugi hands it to her and stares as she puts the bottle on her lips. As soon as Hanabi stops drinking, Mugi grabs her and is about to kiss her when a girl screams from behind them. Mugi tells her that she scared him, while Hanabi asks her who she is. Mugi introduces Noriko to Hanabi, but Noriko calls him out, saying her name is Moka. He explains that she is his childhood friend and then introduces Hanabi as his girlfriend. Before Mugi could continue, Noriko tells him he's a liar. The boy says he's not lying, but Noriko is not having it. As the two bicker, Hanabi closes her eyes and seemingly remembers Moka. The flashback of that field day during her younger school days comes to her again. She's reminded of the little girl who called her a cheater. Kamo me kamo kamo, was it? Hanabi asks. Noriko complains about the many kamos, to which Hanabi only answers, Then Noriko. Noriko is annoyed that she remembers her by that first name, because she now goes by Moka Kamo Mebata. She proudly explains the meaning behind the nickname, short for the most cutest angel. The girl then tells Hanabi that she doesn't answer to anything else. Unamused, Hanabi whispers to herself about how Moka has always been a pain. Moka counters that she remembers Hanabi to be an awful person and wonders how she even bagged Mugi. She must have tricked him. Moka proceeds to insult her, saying she's just pretending to be nice in front of Mugi, but Hanabi just smiles at her and says, No. To the girl's surprise, Mugi butts in and says, Wow. I'm impressed you noticed. He tells Moka that she's right about Hanabi being pretty horrible. Hanabi shrugs and says he's one to talk. Moka is startled by this and asks him if that's what he likes. She looks at him, worried that all her efforts to be princess-like must have been useless. Mugi casually answers her that being horrible is part of what makes her Hanabi. Hanabi stands there, shaken up by what she heard. But instead of showing her feelings, she nonchalantly thanks him and says she likes everything about Mugi too. Moka stares at her suspiciously, then gets surprised when Hanabi grabs her by the collar. She warns her not to go around clinging onto things that aren't hers. The next day, Mugi and Hanabi are hanging out on the rooftop when Mugi suddenly asks why she was harsh with Moka. Hanabi looks at him, her head on his lap, as she answers that Moka likes him. She then asks him why he hasn't turned her down. She understands that he cares for Moga, but it seems that Mugi is just clinging to his sense of superiority. He then asks her why that bothers her. Does she want him all to herself? Is she jealous? She's quick to shut him down, telling him not to get the wrong idea as she's just possessive. Mugi grabs her face and brings her in for a kiss. As they kiss passionately, Hanabi wonders if it is just because of that. She thinks back to what she did to Moga. While their kiss deepens, Hanabi's mind wanders, confused. At the school store, Mugi spots Moka and asks her if she's also getting bread. She says yes and is touched when Mugi hands her the ones she wants. Moka hugs him and tells him she loves him while in the middle of the crowd. 
Mocha spends lunchtime with Mugi and Hanabi. As the two share their lunch, she tries to interfere and eats the chicken karage that Hanabi was about to feed Mugi. The so-called couple pretends that the chicken just disappeared. Annoyed, Mocha yells at them not to ignore her. But before she can finish talking, Hanabi grabs her mouth and tells her that she's the one who needs to cut it out. Mocha jumps away from her and declares, Evil succubus! I bet you don't even like Mugi that much! While this is happening, Sanaya passes by and overhears them. Mocha accuses Hanabi of just using Mugi. While the fake couple simply stares at her, her words make Sanaya ponder. Use? She asks herself. Later, Hanabi and Narumi are walking in the hallway. She asks him why she needs to help him carry the handouts. And Narumi lowers his face to whisper to Hanabi that she's the easiest person to ask. This makes her blush. Hard. As the door closes behind them, Hanabi can't help but think of the chance she has. They're all alone. She's not letting that opportunity slip. While putting down the handouts, Hanabi thinks of how she could get her big brother to look at her as a woman, even if just a little bit. But before Hanabi could touch Narumi's shirt, they hear a faint sound of the piano playing. She realizes they're right next to the music room, meaning Akane is the one they're hearing. She loses her chance again. A defeated Hanabi could only listen as Narumi tells her about how good Akane is and how he always hears her playing. After school that day, Hanabi lets out her anger by yelling on the mic in a karaoke room with Mugi. As she sings loudly, Mugi asks if she ever considers giving up and looking for someone else. Hanabi ignores him and just hands him the other microphone. As Mugi screams out with her, Hanabi faces him with teary eyes. She says Narumi is cool. Mugi stares at her, telling her not to cry as the song's last line continues to play. After singing their hearts out, Mugi and Hanabi sit side by side. Hanabi tells Mugi he must understand her feelings, since they're in the same situation. It's not a matter of giving up or not, because once you fall for someone, it has to be them. I get it. Why did I fall for them, right? Mugi answers, but he explains that it's not all pain. He reminisces about his moments with Akane when she was still his tutor. Those memories are so pure as they are, so precious to him. And that's why he can't bring himself to wish that he never met her. As Mugi reaches out to Hanabi, he asks her to stick her tongue out so he can kiss her deeply. But in the middle of it, he remembers a girl's voice calling his name. When he comes back to his senses, Hanabi calls him by his name and he corrects her. Don't you mean big brother? Hanabi looks away and Mugi grabs her face. She looks at him and caresses his face as he imagines the girl beneath him is Akane. When Hanabi and Mugi part ways, the ache and longing will return like a tight noose around their necks. But for now, perhaps if they close their eyes enough, their lips might just start tasting like love. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.